AMD launched the 9000 series with FSR4, an AI-based upscaling technology. It employs a machine learning based upscaling algorithm to analyze and reconstruct images for better detail and temporal stability. Intel has XESS that leverages deep learning to reconstruct high resolution images from low resolution inputs. It analyzes neighboring pixels and motion compensated frames to fill in details and enhance image quality. XESS is optimized for Intel Arc GPUs, but it also works on other GPUs from vendors like AMD and Nvidia, though it is not producing the exact same performance gains and image quality as on Intel GPUs. Nvidia's 50 series launched with DLSS 4 that brought frame generation up to 4x, a feature that is available only on this series and the new DLSS transformer model that works on the 40 series as well. DLSS provides the best image quality, but today I'm gonna have a look at FSR4's and XESS image quality gap, if any. For testing FSR4, I'm gonna use the 9070XT, the ARC P580 for XESS, while DLSS4 is tested using the 5080. At the time of the recording, I was using the latest drivers available. Before starting with image analysis, keep in mind that YouTube compresses the videos recorded with my capture card, which in turn are compressed as well. Let's first start with XESS versus FSR 2.1 and FSR 3 in Cyberpunk 2077. XESS on ultra quality is usable at 1080p. I think that XESS handles shimmering quite well at this resolution, as opposed to AMD's FSR 2.1. We can see the bridge and the billboards behind the bridge have substantial shimmering on FSR 2.1. The same thing happens when I use FSR 3 quality. Here you can see in fast successions FSR 3 quality and XESS quality, where FSR 3 has more shimmering and less detail in the windows and the palm tree as opposed to XESS. So in Cyberpunk 2077, XESS is the best to use even for AMD owners. This applies to most games, not only Cyberpunk 2077. But how does XESS fares to DLSS paired with the Transformer model? Keep in mind that this game is built around Nvidia technologies, so DLSS is top notch here. In these fast successions, we have XESS and DLSS transformer model, and we can see that DLSS has less shimmering and better image quality, but this is 3x zoom. Without zooming in, it is less obvious though. Now, DLSS quality versus native no AA. Well, DLSS quality preserves details closer to the subject, while it sheds a bit of details further away, like the middle of the road here. This is not much and nobody will notice that, at least if you don't put native and DLSS quality one next to the other. The higher the resolution, the less details you lose when using DLSS quality. But what about FSR4 versus XESS? For this I'm going to use Ratchet and Clank. Keep in mind that in order to be able to use FSR4, you need to enable it in the driver and then if the game is whitelisted by AMD, you should have FSR4 active in Adrenaline. line. FSR4 quality looks amazing in Ratchet and Clank even at 1080p. FSR4 seems to be better than Intel's XESS, at least in this game. The character in this scene loses more detail on XESS than on FSR4. But what about FSR4 compared to DLSS? Well, it's hard to tell which is which, as it can be seen in this fast succession. In games that FSR4 is available and you use upscaling, you will not lose details when compared to DLSS. In this game, DLSS transformer model is not implemented, so this is the old DLSS CNN against FSR4, and to be honest, it's hard to tell them apart though FSR4 seems to preserve a bit more details and have less aliasing as opposed to DLSS as it can be seen in these fast succession scenes. Now, 
FSR4 native will produce better results when compared to FSR4 quality, so you will need to choose between higher FPS or marginally better image quality. At higher resolutions, the differences become less obvious. So, FSR4 is better than Intel's XESS and DLSS, but is it behind DLSS4 transformer model? Let's see this in Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. To my eyes, both look good at native, so it seems that FSR4 is a good AA alternative to DLAA. But what about when enabling upscaling? To me, FSR4 preserves a bit more details in the grass than DLSS4. DLSS4 transformer model seems a bit more washed, to be honest. But these fast scenes are at 3x zoom, so this is nitpicking. The reality is, when developers implement FSR well, you will not be able to tell apart FSR4 and DLSS4. At 1440p and especially at 1080p, going below upscaling set to quality will reduce the image quality, but you will adjust to it. Just don't compare native to balanced or performance at low resolutions. I didn't dial down to balanced or performance as I focus mostly on low resolutions, as I believe most gamers are not running games at 4K. Now, some people state that DLSS quality is better than native. I totally disagree, as if you like the looks of DLSS quality, you can try DLAA and there will be minor differences. And this is what I want to emphasize. The differences are small, and I totally get why people choose to go with upscaling, as in the end, if you play games, you will not stop to analyze every detail that you may lose as opposed to native. FSR4 is amazing. It's on par with DLSS, at least in games where it's implemented properly, and better than XESS. DLSS 4 is available in more games, so it has the upper hand. XESS 2 is a thing and that is on par with FSR 4, but it's not in many games, as is the case with FSR 4. I don't understand why AMD is choosing to whitelist games one by one and enable some games and feature adrenaline iterations. It's not like FSR 3.1 was in a lot of games. Hopefully, moving forward, RDNA 4 will gain ground and developers will include FSR 4 in more games. XESS is good and for AMD 7000 series or older, it's a better choice than FSR 2 or 3, as I'm not sure if AMD will enable FSR 4 for the 7000 series. The only issue with XESS is that it's even in less games than AMD's FSR. I will use OptiScaler and try to switch from FSR to XESS to increase image quality. The gaming industry is releasing some games that require upscaling for a target frame rate at a given resolution, which in my opinion is just poor optimization. I see upscaling as a tool to reach higher frame rates on certain GPUs, like 144 frames per second, not 60. Developers need to ditch this practice and release more polished products, not in beta state, and release patches down the road. And that's it for this video. If you found the video helpful, hit the thumbs up button, drop a comment below and consider subscribing to the channel. Take care and hope to see you all in the next one.